Hey there, econ students and teachers. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at decreasing opportunity cost production possibilities curves. You've already seen lessons in which the country's PPC is either a straight line or bowed outwards from the origin. In this lesson, we'll be looking at cases in which a production possibilities curve is actually bowed inwards towards the origin. Enjoy the lesson. Please subscribe and head over to econclassroom.com for more great resources for economic students and teachers. Thanks for watching. In previous videos, we've learned about situations in which increasing the production of one good along a production possibility curve leads to an increase in the opportunity cost in terms of how many units of the other good must be given up. You might recall the example of berries and rabbits. When an individual chooses to hunt more rabbits, at first they're going to catch the easiest rabbits, the rabbits that are slowest, the rabbits that are fattest, and they're going to stop picking the berries that are hardest to pick. Therefore, the opportunity cost in terms of how many berries were given up is quite low as the individual starts hunting rabbits. In this video, we're going to talk about a different situation, one in which, as the output of a particular good increases, the opportunity cost in terms of how many units of the other good given up actually decreases. Now, there are certain types of goods that are going to demonstrate what we call decreasing opportunity cost. Technology goods tend to be an example of goods that have decreasing opportunity costs. In this example, we're going to be looking at smartphones and electric cars. We've got a production possibilities table over here showing that if this country were to allocate all of its resources towards smartphones, it could produce up to eight smartphones. And if it were to allocate all of its resources towards electric cars, it could produce up to eight electric cars. The question is, how does the opportunity cost of electric cars change as the output of electric cars increases in terms of how many smartphones are going to be given up? Let's start by plotting the points on our production possibilities table on our graph. We first got a point up here at zero electric cars and eight smartphones. Then we've got a point at two electric cars and four smartphones. So that's two cars and four smartphones. And then we've got a point at four electric cars and two smartphones. That's here. Next, six electric cars and one smartphone. That's here. And finally, if this country were to allocate all of its resources towards electric cars, it would produce zero smartphones. So the production possibilities curve for this country, it looks a little different than ones we've seen in previous videos because it is bowed inwards, not outwards. Notice that this is a convex production possibilities curve. In other words, it's bowed inwards towards the origin. Let's go ahead and calculate the opportunity cost between a couple of these points. Let's label them first. We'll call that point A, point B, point C, point D, and point E. As this country moves from point A to B, what's the opportunity cost of electric cars? Well, the country gained two electric cars, so it, it was able to produce two more cars at the cost of four smartphones given up. So I'll call that 4S. The price of each car was one car cost two smartphones. So the opportunity cost between A and B, one car cost two smartphones. What about between B and C? Let's do that now. From B to C, the country gained two more electric cars, and in this case, it gave up two smartphones. So two cars cost two smartphones. That's a cost of one smartphone per car. So from B to C, one car cost one smartphone. The opportunity cost has decreased of cars in terms of how many smartphones are given up. Now let's look between points C and D. As the country moves from C to D, it gains two more cars, and it gives up only one smartphone now. So from C to D, two cars cost one smartphone. So each car, divide both sides by two, one car costs one half of a smartphone. So the price of a car now, the cost of a car, has decreased yet again. And we're going to see finally that as it moves from D to E, from D to E along the production possibilities curve, the country gains once again two more cars, and the cost is only one smartphone again. So the cost, once again, is, divide both sides by two, one car equals one half of a smartphone. So one car equals one half of a smartphone. Along this production possibilities curve, the opportunity cost of electric cars in terms of how many smartphones had to be given up is decreasing. Now what are some explanations, some possible reasons for why technology goods like electric cars 
and smartphones might have decreasing opportunity costs. As the production of electric cars increases, the technology needed to produce electric cars actually becomes more abundant. More resources are going into the production of the inputs needed to assemble and produce electric cars, and as the supply of those inputs increases due to their increased availability, the cost actually decreases. The expertise of engineers and designers improves as more cars are produced, making it cheaper and cheaper to produce electric cars. Now the reverse could be said about smartphones. When smartphones are first starting to be produced, the opportunity cost in terms of how many electric cars are given up is quite high because there's not a lot of technology in smartphone production yet. The best engineers that are currently working in electric car production are going to have to be pulled away from electric cars and put towards the task of designing smartphones. However, the more smartphones are produced, the cheaper the inputs that go into smartphones will become, and therefore the lower the opportunity cost in terms of how many electric cars have to be given up. Let's think about a real-world example of this. Think about the 1980s. It was probably before you were born if you're a student today. However, back then, believe it or not, a simple, low-quality desktop computer cost over $10,000 in today's dollars. Well, today you could get a computer that would far outperform those computers of the 1980s, but the price would be significantly lower, indicating that the opportunity cost of producing desktop computers today is a fraction of what it was 30 years ago, allowing us to enjoy desktop computers at a lower opportunity cost and therefore also a lower price. Here we go.